Hello everybody and welcome to this course on introduction to Japanese language and culture. Well, before I formally start telling you about the language, I would like to introduce myself first and foremost. I am Vatsala Misra and I am teaching Japanese here in IIT Kanpur in the foreign language program. And we will be with you all through the 40 lectures and we will learn Japanese together. We will learn all the expressions, all the proverbs we can, all different forms of verbs and a lot of other things in this course. And towards the end of the course, I am sure you will be very confident about talking in Japanese. Well, these lectures are basically based on my experience with students over these years, what they want of the course, what questions they ask, what is important for them and on all these things I have made this course. I have tried to simplify it as much as I can, tried to give you as much information in a very, very simple way and try to provide, try to give you an insight into the Japanese life, how the Japanese people think, how they interact, what are the kind of expressions they use, what is their mannerism, how they speak, what is the body language, all those things I have tried to do in various ways uh, through pictures, through audios and uh, through a lot of other things which you will see when uh, we actually start on our with our lessons. Well, before I actually begin now, I would like to tell you what I plan to do in the course. But even before that, people tell me and a lot of students always ask me that Japanese is a very, very difficult language and very difficult to learn. There are a lot of scripts and it is difficult to memorize all of them and write in the language. So, well, I would like to ask you before I tell you how difficult or how easy the language is, what is, what is language? What is the purpose of language? What do you think about it? Well, as you can see over here, it is given. Language is a simple medium of communication. In olden times when the scripts were not there, when uh, man was not aware of scripts, of writing, at that time communication was done as it is a medium of communication. Communication was done through pictures, through paintings, through body language by means of gestures and it was considered all right. As you could communicate a lot of things, you could say a lot of things in by doing all those things. But what is the purpose of language? You can see the main purpose of language is to talk to people, to connect to people, to be able to convey in a better way, to be able to talk and to be able to say a lot of things and be understood. That is what the purpose of language is, that is what language is for. So, 
what is required, what is important to cultivate, what is required to cultivate a basic language ability. What are the important things that are required for you, for someone to be able to speak? or communicate. So, well to communicate there are two important things. One is the spoken part and one is the writing part. So, for the spoken part there are different things that are required. For the writing part there are certain different things that are essential. Now, what is essential for speaking or the spoken part of the language. The most important thing for the spoken part is for you to be able to say some sounds, to be able to pronounce something, to be able to utter something, to make a sound, to be able to form words. So, for that what do we need? for spoken language we need phonetics. Now, by doing that, by using that we can make words, with those words we can make sentences and by learning some simple sentences we can make complicated sentences and are able to convey nicely what we want to say to the other person. For writing what do you need? For reading what do you need? Well, the most important thing for reading or for writing is a script. A script is very, very essential and that is the only way you will be able to write something or read something. Now, for a lot of languages you have a simple script, you have alphabets as in English or in Hindi you have your alphabets and you can join the alphabets and make words and with words you can make sentences and convey and do conversation. In Japanese we have that script yes, but we also use pictograms and ideograms. Because of this because of this very reason that we use a phonetic script and these pictograms, lot of time it is felt that the language is difficult, because it is a little difficult to read. Well, in India we are exposed to a lot of languages, we know that there are different scripts, there are different languages, we hear them most of the time, we hear them a lot of times and for example, if you hear a person talking in Urdu and you listen to a person talking in Hindi, well it is understood. You can understand Urdu to a great extent and the person who knows Hindi can, Urdu can understand Hindi easily. But if you see it written, well Urdu script is very different from the Devanagari script. So, what do you think? Does this mean that uh, the person does not know Hindi or vice versa? No, it does not mean that. And that, that happens with a lot of other Indian languages as well. There are lot of South Indian languages, where you can understand when it is spoken, but may not be able to read. And same applies to a lot of European languages. They use the, the European languages, use the English alphabet, but you may be able to read what is written, but then you cannot understand or even decipher what it means. So, well all these things are there and Japanese also depending on what your motivation is, 
what you want to do with the language, whether you just want to do the spoken part or you want to do the, the written part, you will, you will see the difficulty. So, as such any language is difficult and any language can be easy. It depends on the person who is learning the language. So, well, if we think of the writing part, the spoken part can be taken care of by learning words, by doing conversation, by learning a few expressions and uh, other things, doing grammar. But if we think of the writing part, well, writing part may seem a little difficult, but that can be can be learned, can be done by a person and you can start writing and reading very, very easily in Japanese. The reason foreigners are unable to do or the reason they find it a little difficult is because you are not learning the language in the environment. We are learning Japanese. For example, we are learning Japanese here in a very non-Japanese environment, where you are not exposed to Japanese 24-7. If you are doing something in Japan or, or maybe whichever language you are learning, you are doing it in that environment, then it is much faster. Though now you can say that uh, there is the internet now and we have more exposure and we can connect better. But still, if you are talking to Japanese people, if you are, if you are in that environment dealing with the natives, looking at, looking at uh, people interacting, looking at people using expressions, idioms, phrases and uh, the situations that uh, you will encounter, it is much easier to learn. But well, you do not have to get worried about it. We have tried to make it very simple and shown and I have tried to show all of it through, through pictures, through audios and I am sure it would not be as difficult as it seems and after having done these 40 lectures, I am sure that you will be very, very comfortable with the language, with the expressions and grammar. In this course, of course, we will concentrate on the spoken part of the language and with that, we will also lay a foundation for the written part, the writing and the reading of the language. But the main thrust is obviously on the conversation. Now, having said that, this does not mean that I will sort of, we will just do some kind of situational conversation, you will mug it up, you will learn it by heart and you will reproduce it in a situation and um, that is conversation. No, that is not conversation at all and that is not what we are going to do over here. We are definitely going to do conversation, situational conversation, but with that I also plan to teach you language as such. Your interest should be not only on the conversations, but also on learning the language, on understanding how the people are, how they think, how they behave and how they interact with each other. This course is about teaching you how to speak the language, how to enjoy the language, how to learn about the Japanese people and their culture. And well, the people that I think would want to, want to sort of uh, do the course will be students planning to pursue studies abroad in Japan, would want to visit Japan for short periods, not as tourists. This is not a course for tourists as such, this is about learning the language. So, people who want to stay in Japan for short periods and as it is very difficult to move about in Japan without knowing the language it would be very helpful for them if they learn and then go to the country. It is always better, you interact better with people, you are comfortable and things are very easy. And of course, 
for students who are applying for jobs in Japanese companies and most of all the most important thing people who are who have an academic interest and would like to know more about the language. So, this course is all about this and that is how we are going to move ahead. As this is a course meant for people who want to learn the language, well this is going to be a very basic Japanese course where anybody can learn whatever the age you could it could be a child or an adult anybody could learn the course anybody could go over all the lectures and learn the language. And also I would like to tell you that we will start from the very very basics of the language that is from the alphabets itself. The equivalent of A B C D is what we are going to do in the beginning and then gradually graduate from class 1 to class 2 to class 3 and go ahead till class 12. So, well we will do a lot of things here slowly and uh, you will feel comfortable I am quite sure. Also with the, the alphabets also with A B C D as I told you which is very very basic. We will of course concentrate on vocabulary, on grammar, on punctuation, on intonation, on different uh, verb forms and with all this as I have been telling you all along we will also do proverbs and see how the people are and what the culture in Japan is. So, all those things together we will try to do this course with the help of with the help of uh, pictures with the help of audios try to help you as much as I can and give you an insight into the Japanese lifestyle and the people and their culture. So, well now enough of all this and uh, I think we should start with our class and the first thing that we have to do over here is the scripts. So, well there are three scripts in the language we have as you can see over here we have hiragana, katakana and kanji. So, these are the three scripts the hiragana and the katakana are called the kana scripts in Japanese and kanji is the ideograms and the pictograms. We will discuss kanji of course, in detail later as well, but first we should talk about hiragana and katakana. Now, it is interesting that till the 4th century AD the Japanese did not have a script and they had a language they had a language they could talk freely, but there was no script. So, now if you do not have a script well you cannot document anything you cannot write anything. So, as traveling increased and as people started coming to Japan trade was happening. So, through trade and through people coming into Japan from China and Korea lot of pictograms from China entered Japan. They realized that this was some kind of a script which they could use for documenting and slowly over period of time with the help of these pictograms which entered Japan at that time via trade hiragana came into being. They developed this new script which was called hiragana. Hiragana is a script which is used for Japanese words, words of Japanese origin belonging to Japan. And then with trade with people coming in with Japanese people going out probably to Korea or to China foreign words also entered into Japan. Foreign words slowly came and they were being used in the language. So, now there was a problem as to how to write 
those foreign words. From this, from these pictograms, from these pictograms and ideograms, which were already there, katakana was made, katakana was developed for foreign words. So, the difference between hiragana and katakana, the basic difference is that hiragana is for words of Japanese origin and katakana is words for Chinese or foreign, that time Chinese and now of course, foreign origin. Also, because kanji came first, the pictograms came first to Japan. The ladies were not allowed or could not get access to these kanji characters and they were not allowed to write. Slowly over period of time, when hiragana was developed, the ladies got the script of hiragana and they started writing in hiragana and thus this you will notice that this script, when I show you the script, you will see that it is very cursive, it is round, it is circular, whereas katakana is very angular. We will discuss of course, these Chinese characters later also. For the time being, these are just pictograms and ideograms, meaning pictures and ideas shown depicted in line form. We have a few, for example, a sun. When, when someone says make sun, what do you do? This is exactly what you draw and automatically anybody would say that this is sun. Now, what does the sun do? The sun divides day and night into a day into two parts, which is day and night. So, well, if you want to show this in lines, this is how it is going to come, it is going to divide like this. So, it is to be a square and it will be divided in this form, in this manner like this. So, when you look at, when a Chinese or a Japanese would look at this character, immediately the picture that comes to their mind is of sun. Now, after the course, when you look at this picture all the time, you will think of the sun or something to do with light, something to do with brightness, something to do with day or date. So, these are the things that will come to your mind. This is how these pictograms and ideograms have come into being. A certain idea, a certain picture that forms in your mind when you look at something is shown or depicted like this in form of straight horizontal and vertical lines. So, well, we will go ahead now and see what hiragana and katakana are. Well, the kana scripts are phonetic scripts, they are symbols, phonetic symbols, whatever you say, you write. So, hiragana has 46 basic symbols and so has katakana, also 46 basic symbols. Now, there is a second set also of both the scripts for both the scripts. The second set has 25 characters each and the interesting part is that the second set is made from the first set using by using just two symbols like this and this. These two symbols are used in the first set and another second set of 25 symbols is made. So, this is the kana script of course, when you see you will know. You can see the stroke order, stroke order means 
how the character is made, what is to be drawn first and what comes after that and what follows later. Well, you have this set, the first set of 46 symbols of hiragana right in front of you over here and you can see the first line is the vowel line. The vowels are here. I will read them out to you once. Then we have the k sound or the k sound, s or s sound, t or th sound, n or n sound, h or h sound, m or m sound, y or y sound, r or r sound and then we have this w over here, n over here and o over here. These two are given of course, in the olden script, but now these are not in use anymore. First let us do the vowels. Well, the vowels are, you can repeat after me, a, e, u, a, o. Once again, a, e, u, a, o. Then we have the k series and you have to join this k with the vowel here which makes it ka, ki, ku, k and ko. And in a similar manner for the s series sa, shi, su, se and then so. You will notice over here that this is a little different. The sound is not C, but it is she. This is an exception. Please keep that in mind. Then we have the the series and again in a similar manner ta, chi, tsu, te, to. Chi and tsu again are a little different. These are also exceptions. So, you need to remember these three exceptions shi, chi and tsu. Then we have the n series and again in a similar manner na, ni, nu, ne and no. And then the H series ha, he, who, he and ho. And then the ma series or the m series ma, me, mu, me, mo. Now, you will notice something over here that all these consonants, all these k, s, t, n, h, m so far are joining with vowels here and then the sound is there. Then the syllable is made. So, in Japanese please remember all syllables will always have a vowel in the end. No syllable is complete without a vowel except for one and we are going to do this very soon. Well, then we come to the Y series ya, you, yo. The R series ra, ri, ru, re, ro. 
then we have wa you can leave these two out o and m now as i told you just now this is the only one which does not end in a vowel you will say how will we use this well i'll give you a word very simple how would you say orange in japanese well it is orange so the m sound in orange is this alphabet over here then if you take the word in japanese it is mikan for orange so well mi ka m again you see this m sound that's how it is going to be used and you will notice for all of them that they all end in vowels you can write them very nicely the stroke order is given very clearly over here and of course you can go on the net and see hiragana and katakana and different ways of writing hiragana and katakana well this is very clearly given in different colors for you to remember the exceptions are also given over here and you can revise it and do it at home now you will see that katakana though the pronunciation is the same writing system is given over here but you will notice that it is very very angular unlike hiragana i'll show you the slide once again you can see how cursive and round it is how feminine it looks and then this katakana over here extremely masculine very very angular so well it's the same a e u a o ka ki ku ke ko sa shi su se so ta chi tsu te to na ni nu ne no ha hi hu he ho ma mi mu me mo ya you and yo well the these two are missing in both hiragana and katakana because it is very similar to this sound so thus it has been left out then you have ra ri ru re ro wa o and m now this o and this o for both hiragana and katakana have a different meaning this is a vowel and this is used as a particle in the language now we will talk about particles also but a little later for the time being you could just keep it in mind that o over here is used as a particle and not this o but the o in hiragana please remember that hiragana are used for words of japanese origin and also to change tenses of verbs and to show different verb forms hiragana is used and katakana of course is for foreign words well this is katakana for you you can see very clearly again in different colors easy to memorize so you can do this now as i was telling you kanji is our ideograms and pictograms each character has a meaning each symbol as you can see over here this symbol has a meaning and each character has minimum two readings one a chinese reading and another one a japanese reading so please as can be seen each character has a meaning and a reading of its own there are specific ways of writing and one has to memorize the stroke order which is how the strokes are to be made in kanji it is extremely extremely important to memorize and learn the stroke order because the stroke order for a character is fixed that does not 
change and there is a reason because you need to go to the next character or word. So, it has to end over here 1 and it has to start from here like this. You cannot start a character from here and maybe go here and do something like this. No, there is a specific set order to write kanji characters pictograms. Well, now what are kanji characters? What are pictograms? As I just told you about Nichi. So, when you look at this now, I think you will think of the sun. How would you show a man in line? Man in lines. Well, this is how a man looks. When you want to talk about someone, you say, okay, this person over here. But you cannot make this picture all the time and write about man and say this is what is man. Okay. So, what will you do? Well, just remove the head from here, just make it like this. When you look at this picture now, what does it look like? Does not it remind you of a man? Well, you can see now, see when you make this, you know it is a man. So, in Japanese or in Chinese in pictograms, when you write this character, it tells you that it is a man, you are talking about someone. Well, if you if you if you look at this, what do you think it is? It is water, is not it? It looks like a river flowing. So, well, it is going to be made like this. If you look at fire, how will you show fire in, in uh, a character? How will you show it in lines? Well, this is how fire looks like. You have the logs over here, you have wood over here and when it burns, well, this is what it looks like. Now, how will you show it in picture form or in line form? Simple like this, this and make it like this. So, simple like this, this and this. So, when you look at this, you will know we are talking about fire. This is what pictograms are all about. Of course, these are very simple pictograms. These are not difficult pictograms. You can relate to them. You can, you can understand these very clearly. It only gets complicated when it becomes a little abstract. So, well, we will do with that, we will do all of that later. As I told you, this is Hito, this is Hito. Now, what does this look like? This looks like a mouth, an opening, is not it? So, if you join these two characters, it means population. So, many mouths, so many people, so many mouths to feed. And what is that? That is population. So, well, that is how you would think of kanji characters. There is one more very simple, you have done this one over here. This means fire. And what is a volcano? Volcano throws fire. A mountain is like this. You can see with the base over here. This looks like a mountain. So, well, if you have this and this, automatically even if you do not know the word, you know that this is a mountain which throws fire. So, it is a volcano. So, that is how these kanji characters have come into being and that is how you write them, that is how you show them and you understand. Now, Japanese is written horizontally and vertically as well. You can see horizontally, you can see it is written over here and vertically, you can see how it is written. You can also write like this, but it starts from the right side. Please remember not from this side, you go this way, but when you write horizontally, it starts from the left side. That is very, very important. Also, you will notice something else over here. There are no spaces 
at all. And kanji characters, hiragana characters are all used simultaneously together. And of course, you can see there is this katakana also used over here. So, in the language, all three scripts are used simultaneously, which was not happening earlier. Earlier, for a long, long time, the Japanese continued to write in either kanji, katakana or hiragana. But now, as you can see very clearly in this slide, all three are used together. Now, as I told you, there are no spaces. Something is written over here in Japanese and something is written over here. We are used to space in between words. But the Japanese have no problem at all in reading this. Why? Because you have kanji pictogram, you have the hiragana in blue and then in red you have in orange you have katakana. So, without even spacing it is very, very clear. Now, we will do the vowels very quickly and give you some vocabulary. You can repeat after me. The meanings are given over here in black. I will not read out the meanings. I will just read out what is written in hiragana and of course, in Roman it is given over here. You can read this as well. This is the vowel series a, e, u, a and as I told you, A for apple, B for bat is what we are going to do here. So, well, ahiru, ari, isu, inu, ushi, uchi. A B A K Origami Om. So you can repeat all these again and again, and I'm sure you'll feel comfortable very soon. There is more. You can repeat after me. Ashi, Ase, Ishi, Ito, Usagi, Ue, Uta, Eki. Eda, Oni, Okashi, Otera. So, all the meanings are given very clearly. You can learn these. Then we have the K series or Ka series. You can see the sound k series kani kasa kirin kimono kusa kutsu keiki. Now, this is a foreign word, thus it is written in katakana, cake and also kohi, long sound ko and hi, kohi, coffee and koara, kola bear, ko a ra, koara, kola bear and you will notice that we do not have a l in Japanese, all L's 
are supposed to be pronounced as ra sounds. So, all the meanings are given very clearly, you can learn these. Then vocabulary for the K series, kaban, kagi, ki, kitsune, kuchi, kudamono, kushi, keiki, keitai, keshigomu, kodomo, kocha. So, well the meanings are again given, it is given in Roman as well. So, you can please read all of it and learn it. Now, we have the Sa series and in the Sa series you already know the she is an exception. So, well Sakana, Saru, Shika, Shima Uma, Suzume, Suika, Semi, Sebiro, Sora, Soba. So, this is the Sa series for you. The she of course is different. Please try to pronounce the she. It is she as in the English S H E she, but over here the pronunciation is S H E she. Over here it is the spelling or the syllable is S H I. Some words again Sake, Sara, Same, Shichi, Shingo, Sumo, Sushi. Senaka, Seta is a sweater and the sound is a little long. And in the end we have Sura. So, why I have given this vocabulary like this to you is for you to make sentences, for you to speak out loudly. And one thing very important over here is that you should speak out loudly and say it very, very clearly so that it is heard by you and you can understand where you are fumbling or going wrong. So, well the meanings are again given, it is given in Roman as well. So, you can please read all of it and learn it. Now, for your first lesson there are a lot of things, but well we should do the numerals over here the numbers. So, well very very quickly it is given the equivalence of all this is over here ichi, ni, san, yon, go, roku. Nana, Hachi, Q, 
jiu. Once again, ichi, ni, san, yon, go, roku, nana, hachi, kyu, jiu. It's a long sound, so please practice this so that you are comfortable when we do something new in our next class. There is a small expression. In fact, there are two. There is Ohayo gozaimasu with a rising intonation here, meaning good morning. So, anytime you meet someone from 6 in the morning till 10 o'clock, well, you can say Ohayo gozaimasu very freely. And also, if you are very, very informal with the person, Ohayo will suffice. And then you have konnichiwa, which means good day, and you can use it from 10 o'clock onwards till 5 or 6 in the evening, just before dark. Konnichiwa and ohayo gozaimasu. So, it is ohayo gozaimasu and konnichiwa. Well, practice these expressions. We will be doing more of these in our classes later. Now, my work is over for today and your work begins. You have some assignments here for you. The first one is you have these words, the vocabulary that we did and the English meanings over here. Just match group A with group B. Then we have 1, 2, 3, 4 till 10. Well, match 1, 2, 3, 4 with their equivalents in Japanese. There are a number of pictures here. I want you to name all the pictures and practice loudly and then there is a small exercise. There is a small picture here of a lot of things. Just list the objects in the picture. With that, I will end for today. Today has been a little long for you. Well. With this, I would like to end. Thank you very much and mata aimasho. And this phrase that I am using, I will explain to you tomorrow. So, minasan, mata ashita aimasho. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you.